you think Common Ground is worth a buck, consider leaving a tip at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. This episode of Common Ground. We're going on an air tour of Bemidji in a historic airplane, the Ford Trimotor. I'm John Maxfield. I'm a volunteer pilot with the EAA based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and we have brought a 1929 Ford Trimotor to the Bemidji Airport to give rides to local public. This is our 1929 Ford Trimotor built in Dearborn, Michigan. It's a serial number 69 of 199 that were built between 1927 and 1932. This, as far as we're concerned, is the airplane that started the modern day airline industry. Henry Ford sold the airplane on safety and reliability. All metal construction versus fabric and wood back in the 20s. Three engines instead of one, two pilots. He was a firm believer in air travel and to make a profit. He thought he could do both, promote aviation and make some money. And he did it with the Ford Trimotor. And don't forget comfort. And comfort, yes. This airplane enclosed. is fully enclosed. Prior to that, the pilots sat out in the wind. The passengers would sit out in the wind in, in the early biplanes. Absolutely. Uh, this airplane came with a lavatory and with a flight attendant, as we know it, a stewardess at the time that uh, would serve meals, and uh, they were registered nurses. That's what started the airline business. This aircraft Absolutely. was very revolutionary. Again, it started the modern-day airline industry. It wasn't long-lived as the first-line airliner. It served its purpose to get the industry going. It operated out of, for the most part, farmers' fields. It had you know, excellent capabilities for doing that, but hauling people in a reliable fashion. You know, shortly after the Ford was you know, introduced, other airplanes came along that now required runways, but were bigger, faster, a little bit more comfortable, like primarily the Douglas DC-3. Probably the biggest contribution to aviation was that this airplane is designed and built entirely out of aluminum. Prior airplanes had wooden wings, maybe steel tubing, fabric covering, materials that were a little more fragile, uh, a little more prone to failure over time. I think there was a lot of proof of concept taking place in here, all these new materials, and the idea of you know reliable travel, moving people to and from. So you know, though it might not be physical, there were a lot of ideas, there was a lot of paradigms that were started with the Ford Trimotor. Because remember, back in the day, there were no expressways, and it took maybe a month to go from east coast to west coast in a car with how many breakdowns at slow speeds, on unimproved roads, things like that. With the invention of the Ford Trimotor, you could leave New York City, uh, for example, on a train, and go to Columbus, Ohio in the morning, get onto a Ford Trimotor, and fly all day, and get on another train, travel that night, get on a different Ford Trimotor in the Mountain West and fly into Los Angeles. It cut your time across the country significantly. Yeah. Yeah. So here, again, you know, just another way of, you know, of, of changing air travel. But this is the airplane that started it all. And Henry Ford also started infrastructure for the airline, such as paved runways, airport hotels, that still exist in Dearborn, Michigan at the original Ford Airport. Uh, the Dearborn Inn, operated today by the Marriott Corporation, was one of the first airport hotels. This very airplane. This one. This is the airplane that started Eastern Airlines. This is the airplane. It started uh, Eastern Air Transport, which grew into Eastern Airlines, and from there went to Cuba to start Cubana Airlines. From there, the airplane traveled to the Dominican Republic, where it served for their 
chief executive. It was Air Force One for the Dominican Republic, if you will. And from then it came back to the U.S. It came Doug. back to the U.S., uh, was used for crop dusting and smoke jumping. That's probably one of the more interesting roles it played. It took skydivers, you know, took them out into the fires you know, so they could battle it. And one of the unusual parts about this airplane, if you go around to the side, you notice that the door is square on the bottom. All the other Ford Tri-Motors are round at the top and round on the bottom, taking uh, from the nautical history and the nautical heritage, like a boat hatch. This one, they specially modified to have a square bottom to aid in the smoke jumpers getting out. And then we're the only ones that to have that from a Johnson Flying Service. And because it takes off and lands in short distances after the fire's out, this airplane could go into short mountain airstrips and bring the yeah, fire jumpers back out. After that stint there, it was uh, used for what we're doing today, barnstorming, going from town to town, letting people experience what it was like to fly a, an airplane in 1929, 1930. As well as being a movie star. A movie star, yes. It's, it's got two films to its credit now. Uh, the Family Jewels with uh, Jerry Lewis. And more recently, uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp and Public Enemy. Uh, that was filmed in, uh, portions of it were filmed in Oshkosh, and it was just kind of neat having him around and, you know, being around the airplane. Come out and go for a ride. Come out, go for a ride. We're, we're just happy to be here. Love to share the airplane with everybody. Love to see the smiles. Guarantee if you take a ride, the smile will be bigger when you exit the airplane than when you got on. I thought coming in last, I'd be in the bathroom. <laughs> well, one of the three works. What's it like flying over Bemidji as oh, it's, a pilot? It, it, it's a nice supper Midwest town, pure America. Well, we saw the university there at the point. Oh, saw the uh, the new Hilton Hotel under construction. Okay. Saw the uh, the tents set up for a Fourth of July celebration. 
and uh, just the beautiful lakes and uh, rivers in the area. Thanks for riding with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was great. Welcome back to 2013. Take a picture. I just want a picture of there. Actually, I didn't uh, the Ford. think that transportation in 1920s and 30s would be as comfortable as this. Uh -huh. is. Yeah. It's relatively quiet, too. I, I do. You. I do have to laugh, laugh how it's cabling that ha that runs everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And on the outside, the we'll airplane. See, yeah. We can see the cables on modern day airlines or yeah. air airplanes. Yeah. The cables are hidden in the structure mm. uh, behind panels, and uh, you don't see it. Back yeah. back in 1929, very basic. Uh, they put the cables on the outside, so any cargo that they put on the inside of the airplane wouldn't affect the yeah. uh, the controllability. Yeah. Do the new airliners actually have cable or is it all electronic? Uh, Airbus is uh, all electronic, fly by wire. Fly yeah, by wire. but other companies still build with uh, cable. With the cable. Yeah, actuating hydraulic actuators. Yeah. Or some combination of the both. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Do you see how they sophisticatedly added the GPS? I see that, area? yes. Yeah. We use that as much for weather as anything. Oh, really? So we have to keep an eye on weather. Because the airplane is such an artifact, we put it in a hangar. Whenever the weather's bad overnight, sure, uh, it, it's man just mandatory. Well, this was very enjoyable. Thank you. Well, so thank much. Thank you for coming along. Thank you, David. <laughs> Watch your head and your camera. And it's one of the few airplanes you can leave your cell phone on. If you can hear it yeah. ring, you can answer, answer it. it. <laughs> well, I was always interested in airplanes, and uh, and a sixth grade teacher at, at our school had a they took us to World Chamberlain Field in Minneapolis, and when they got there, they had a, a Ford tri-motor there. And I borrowed a dollar fifty cents from her to get a ride in that Ford tri-motor. And that was my first airplane ride. That had to be about uh, 1934, something like that. Since then, I've been flying all my life. I was a Navy pilot. called the Vosikorsky Kingfisher. And you flew in that? Yeah, that's what I flew in. What place. position did you occupy? You know, I was an enlisted pilot. Oh, an enlisted pilot? Yeah, they're, was, they're rare. When, yeah. I, my, my rating was a, AP first class, that aviation pilot first class. Oh, wow. At Petty Officer. So. When I was in the Navy, I flew in an airplane that had an enlisted pilot, too. I flew a, a, a kingfish. It was a kingfisher, it was a seaplane. I flew it off a, off of a cruiser, cruiser a, a catapult off the cruiser uh, in uh, in South America is where I flew, where I w flew the airplane. Were you looking for submarines? Yeah, that's right. We were looking for submarines, and we were looking for. We were also looking for uh, for a. Uh, uh, Japanese and German freighters, shipping freighters there, which we found frequently. So uh, uh, after I got out, I, I went to work for Piper Aircraft for 20 years. I, I worked for them 
and I belonged to the Experimental Aircraft Association for 30 years. So today, my daughter says, I'm going to take you out to see the Ford Tri-Motor. I said, well, okay, so, so here I am. The EAA is the Experimental Aircraft Association, based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, started in 1953, initially by people who wanted to build their own airplanes, but it's grown in popularity to the point that it includes anyone interested in aviation. The EAA's mission is to include people in aviation and grow aviation uh, through education, outreach programs, and uh, tours like the Ford Tri-Motor and uh, B-17. My name is Tom Omlid. I'm vice president of the local chapter of EAA. Uh, that's the Experimental Aircraft Association. We meet in Bemidji here at the airport the second Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. in the airport lobby. And it's open to general public, anybody that has interest in aviation, we welcome them to come and uh, attend a meeting. EAA is a organization of aviation enthusiasts, uh, people that, that love to be around airplanes, uh, it's not just pilots, it's not just uh, uh, airplane owners, anyone that wants to be involved. It began as a, as a small group of people that uh, wanted to build their own experimental aircraft, and it grew from there, and it's, it's opened up many different avenues of uh, enthusiasts along the way. You know, the general public really don't have an idea of what it takes to become involved with general aviation. So the EAA has made big steps by promoting this Ford Tri-Motor here, bringing it into smaller communities like Bemidji so that they can see a piece of history flying here. EAA National Headquarters is in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, of course. They have numerous programs like this that do tours around the country all summer long to promote general aviation to the public. One of our big things that we're trying to promote aviation in is the youth. So we have a Young Eagles program that is designed to bring aviation to young people that, that have an interest. So we give Young Eagles flights out here. We have scheduled ones that we generally set them up and we schedule them with the high schools or elementary schools, whichever. They range in ages from 7 to 18. Our chapter is concentrated on involving children, young people in this aviation thing. We've reached out to area schools in this science and math classes and shop tech classes and so on and had those teachers and those instructors get a hold of the students they think would enjoy aviation. Then we concentrate on them and getting them involved in the Young Eagles program. Once they sign on and become a Young Eagle, they have a free membership in EAA until they turn 18. They get all their ground school costs covered and they get their first introductory lesson covered by EAA. So they are doing a lot to promote general aviation because it's suffered a loss in the last 25, 30 years. Well, what it does in the community is, is it gives these young people a purpose and it gives them a very lively interest in a fun activity. You know, it's, it's not just a video game, it's not electronic stimulation. They're actually getting out here and going for a ride and they, they get to see their home from above. And The Young Eagles pilots are very accommodating to these kids. They want to know where they live. Let's go find your house. And they'll take them out and they'll find their house. So it gives them a real good sense of what flying really is. And so as far as what it gives the community, it gives the young people a chance because there's so many distractions these days on our young people that they need a positive, uh, a positive point to look at here. It gives them perspective to understand our past, to not repeat it, to promote the development and uh, technology for the future. It, it's a building block. Oh, I, I think it's important because it kind of stirs the people up and gets them interested in aviation. And, and uh, there's not too many people interested in aviation these days. Aviation has has pretty well supplied the culture up in here. You know, in the in the 
early days, a lot of these places were only accessible by float plane or by ski plane in the wintertime. And general aviation's got a real core base of people here in northern Minnesota. There's a lot of small private strips out in the bush out here, you might say. There's a lot of uh, just good, good-hearted people that take part in this general aviation population of Minnesota here. A big thing that people get afraid of in aviation is the cost. What does it cost to own an airplane? What does it cost for me to go and learn how to fly? Here in Bemidji, we're fortunate to have Bemidji Aviation Services over here, and they have revitalized their flight training program here. They've got several instructors, they're giving ground schools. Simple thing to do is to call Bemidji Aviation here at the airport and learn about what it takes to become a pilot. Uh, the other thing is, is safety, okay, people are always afraid, all oh, these small planes, they have one engine, what happens if something goes wrong? Every time a pilot takes his plane out, he does a complete safety inspection of that aircraft. There's a checklist for every aircraft, that pilot goes through numerous items and he checks every one of them every time he takes that plane out, which is a lot more safer than what most people do when they go hop in their car and just go barreling down the road. Because we check the fuel, we check the oil, we check the tires, we check all of the operating cables, we check all our radios, all the electronics. Every time you fly, it's took care of. So they're a lot more safer than your car, you might say. The only thing you hear on the news is the negative part, somebody crashed an airplane. They don't tell any other of the story. And which is typical, you don't like to hear all the bad things and so on, but a lot of times there's a lot of things that lead up to an accident. So um, on a personal standpoint, I believe that the safety factor is very high in general aviation. If somebody wants to become involved with the EAA, they can go to their website, which is eaa.org, and find out about membership there. On a local basis, if they want to become involved with our chapter, they just need to show up on a, the second Thursday of every month and show up for a meeting. We have meetings here at the airport. We also have them out over at a local grass strip, uh, the old Moberg seaplane base. Uh, during the summer, we have meetings over there. And so there's a lot of ways to become involved. It might be interesting to know that this airplane is rare. There's arguably 20 of them in museums around the world. There's arguably six or seven that are flying, but there's only one or two that you can buy a ride in. Yes. It's extremely rare. And we're, we're proud and privileged to be able to to bring it, you know, to Bemidji and, and everywhere else. You go to the, these wonderful museums. We have one that's associated with this airplane, the Henry Ford in Dearborn, Michigan. You can see a beautiful Ford Trimotor there too. It's collecting dust. Here, we bring the history to you. You actually get to experience it, not just look at it. So that's one of the neat things, you know, to bring that kind of history to people. And the, and the EAA in Oshkosh uh, makes aviation available to everyone. Young people, old people, regardless of your level of interest or what type of aviation you're interested in. There's uh, educational programs for young people. There are summer camps for young people to learn math, science, technology, just life values through aviation. Yeah, we are the leaders in recreational aviation.
Thank you so much for joining us on this tour. Join me again next time for another episode of Common Ground. If you have an idea for a Common Ground piece that pertains to North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call us 218-333-3022. To view any episode of Common Ground online, visit us at lptv.org. Order individual segments or entire episodes of Common Ground, please call 218 333 3020. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people on the 4th of November 2008.